Mustangs, a living symbol of the Wild West. More than 80,000 wild horses run free on the public lands of 10 states of the American West, areas administered by the BLM, Bureau of Land Management. But to keep that ground from being overgrazed, the BLM conducts periodic roundups, offering the horses it gathers for adoption. Fifth saddling and fourth ride. But turning a wild animal into a dependable and trusting saddle horse doesn't happen by magic. Uh, we just started working with him last week. And since 1998, Steve Mantle and the Cowboys at Mantle Ranch have worked with the BLM to train wild horses and give them a good chance to be successfully adopted into good permanent homes. They're going to be to where normal everyday Joe can go put a halter on it, pet it, pick up its feet, get it saddled. On this hot July day in Wheatland, Wyoming, Steve and his crew are going through the daily routine. Catching the horses they'll work with today. It's kind of like a treat when they come into the stalls. To get the day off to a good start. Just a little bite. We're not trying to fatten them. The immediate goal is to get about 20 horses ready for an upcoming public adoption event in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We're trying to maximize the amount of horses that we can get adopted to people that are gentle, that have a better than an average chance to stay at a good home because they have been gentled and they're easier for people to work with. They look like they're uh, used to people. Yeah, that's what I tell, tell the, the guys here, the kid that works for us in the summer, he says, well, you've, you've ruined a perfectly good wild horse. <laughs> Horses that will be gentled, but not broke. What's your definition, you know? Will they stop, walk, trot, lope, back up, load in and out of the trailer, walk over a tarp, cross a bridge? Yep, they will, you know. But are they broke? No. <laughs> Mantle Ranch works with about 200 horses at a time, equines that have spent their entire lives running wild until they came here. I guess that's what I mean by gentle. We try to expose them to as much stuff as we possibly can before somebody else gets them, because our goal is to have a positive adoption. We don't want the BLM paying us to readopt the same horse over and over and over. We want that horse to go and stay. The animals will typically get anywhere from 30 to 90 days of training before being offered for adoption. But for prospective owners, that's just the beginning. I tell people it's a commitment. I mean, don't commit unless you're going to commit. And, and sometimes you should be committed. <laughs> Training needs to be ongoing. Because that horse is used to my feel, my smell, my touch, my movement. He doesn't know yours. And so it's gonna take him 30 days to figure that out. And then the next 30 days, you start getting in sync. And then the next 30 days, it's really enjoyable. If you have the knowledge base, but I tell people if they don't have it, for God's sakes, get some help. He's relaxing now. And while wild horses are in many ways identical to their domestic cousins, they do have one big difference. The only really difference is their sense of self-preservation. But their sense of self-preservation is like this, and the domestic horses is down here. All of them have it. This is teaching them that there's pressure on each end, and the relief of pressure is in the center. To transform that wild animal into the trusting friend of the human, Mantle Ranch uses what's known as natural horsemanship. Trainers apply pressure to the horse, not pain, and then immediately release that pressure when the horse properly responds. And you don't want to hurt him anyway. I mean, you want all of these actions by these horses to come from pressure, not pain. And when it comes from pain, they're not learning. We start them out working them around in the round pen, just send them around in circles and then usually when they they figure out that if they face you all the pressure stops and so i just back away and then they get to realize that the only safe place in this round pen is with me so let's say we'll just use my hat as a so let's say the hat is the tarp and the horse is afraid of the tarp so you bring the horse towards the tarp and then let it ride away and then you turn it over here and you bring it back towards the tarp and you let it right away. And then you take it out here and you put it to work. You trot some circles, maybe you lope a little bit, and then you offer the hat and do nothing. Pet the horse's neck. Pretty quick, they'll go right up to it because this is the only place in the trail that has no pressure. It takes time and patience, 
but you end up with a horse that does what you ask because he trusts you instead of one that responds out of fear. My saddle horses, they were scared not to do what I asked them because I punished them if they didn't. I just didn't know any better. The old school way of breaking and bucking out horses that Steve grew up with at his family's horse ranch in Colorado. And so now I have like an old horse up here in the barn that he will do anything I ask because we're buddies. In fact, he does it better than the ones that were doing it out of fear. Try to handicap myself sometimes where I don't use my reins at all. Steve got introduced to natural horsemanship about the year 2000 when someone gave him a tape of trainer Brian Newbert. And, and on the back up too. Anyway, I completely wore it out. It was like, I can do this. I, this makes sense to me. He got us off on the right track to work. Things just started picking up and we started getting better and doing more. And, and the real beauty of it is both my boys grew up with him, so they didn't have anything to unlearn. That's your grandson? Yeah. And even though he works with horses every day, Mantle is still learning. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, my dad used to say, you have green tomatoes, you have red tomatoes, and you have rotten tomatoes. So I just want to stay the green tomato. <laughs> You gotta try to put yourself in their position for a minute and think, you know, if someone just puts a rope on you and starts tugging on you, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as we can for them. And that's the hardest thing with, with training Mustangs is the communication between the person and trying to get the message they want to the Mustang in a way that the Mustang can understand it. Today, Steve's sons do much of the training along with hired hands. This will be his fourth ride. Taking their time to build trust with the wild horse. He's just starting to figure things out teaching them there is nothing to fear. As soon as they figure out that you're not going to hurt them, they're pretty much just like any other broke horse. You have this, this language that they live by and they work with, and, and you just need to kind of immerse yourself in it. Mustangs do have their critics in the horse world, where many believe they can't compare with a well-bred American quarter horse. Mantle says while they may never win the national finals rodeo, the right Mustang with the right training can make a great partner. Oh yeah, I rode one for 18 years. Um, and old, well, he's, he's retired out here now. Uh, I took him to every demonstration event that I went to, every BLM event. I took him to all the neighbors, Brandon's here in the spring and rope calves on him and, and I, I used him for everything. He's been from Kalispell, Montana to Beaumont, Texas. And uh, yeah, he was great. And that's what all these horses need. They need a friend who will make them part of the family. You know, we'll get pictures and emails back from people on Messenger and things like that. You know, I got this horse five years ago and I'm doing this, this, and this. And that's, that's really cool. And the daily training and work at Mantle Ranch and similar outfits helps make that happen. Making people's dreams come true, huh? Yeah, some of them, yeah. Yep. Owning a little piece of the Wild West, that's really what, what these are.